Ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to Hermit's Cave. I've just realised I've not lit any incense. I'm just going to um, light some of those. So I hope we're all doing okay. I hope we all had a wonderful Samhain and Halloween, however you identify and what that holiday or Sabbat means to you, but I hope it was everything you wanted it to be. It was very blessed this year to have a blue moon as well as um as well as it falling on on Samhain. So how wonderful was that? So today we're going to be looking at the Witcher's Wisdom Tarot, which I'm really excited about. Um I saw Becca um do uh, she received this as a gift and I wasn't even aware of it until then and it's been created by two modern day witches um, Phyllis Corot and Danielle Barlow and like Becca um, the Green Wheel Oracle which is also by the artist Danielle Barlow is an absolute favourite because the artwork is stunning in this in this deck um, it is an independently produced um, deck but as you can see it's absolutely beautiful it also has um, the sabbats in there as well as um, you know animals um, it's on this very thick linen cardstock um, but the artwork is absolutely gorgeous here we have spider, we have gods and goddesses in there as well. We have mother maiden crone, just we have the symbols like the Triskelly, the um, labyrinth. So really wonderful. And we have the Holly King and the Oak King. Oh, just just beautiful. Honey bee. The harvest moon. Really, really gorgeous. Oh look at that for the hair. So so yeah, really gorgeous uh, Oracle deck. So when I realised um that it was by the same artist uh, Danielle Barlow, I instantly, before even completing watching Becca's walkthrough video, I hit the buy button. Now this has been a, a bit of a, a journey as well because <laughs> it was scheduled to be delivered next day on the Friday and it said out for delivery so I was all excited about it. I'd, I'd got a really bad cold and I thought oh, I just want something to, to work with and cheer me up um, and then it, I got that unable to deliver. Now this was going to be sent to a hub which is in a shop called Next which I knew was open so I contacted Amazon. They got in touch with the distribution centre who rang me back saying he'd gone to the wrong place. Don't worry we've been in touch with him. He's on his way back and it will be delivered today guaranteed. It wasn't. So um, yesterday it was out for delivery again all day expected today expected today wasn't delivered again so i kind of just lost hope and i thought you know if i haven't got it by monday i'll just ring up and cancel an order from board depository but it's turned up today on a sunday which i'm just happy to have it the i haven't done this as i took it out of its box it caught on the inside so a bit of the cellophane is ripped but it hasn't been opened yet we're going to do that um do that now now this deck is by Hay House, which um, I was quite surprised about because they don't do a lot of tarot decks, less than by um, formerly Dorian Virtue or Radley Valentine, and there was the Colette Baron Regal on the Good Tarot, um, but they're more well known for their Oracle and Affirmation type decks. Um, and I do feel, although I won't, I am gonna try and work with this as a tarot, 
I do feel that this deck does lend itself to being used as an oracle as well. And I'll explain why. Although, um, you know, it is a tarot, but it's a kind of reimagined tarot, reorganized tarot, or a tarot deck that has been brought up to, to date. So it's being billed as a, a, a modern day kind of tarot. But as you can see, it's called the Witch's Wisdom Tarot, which is a 78 card deck and guidebook. And as I said, it's by Phyllis Carrot and Danielle Barlow, who are two witches. It's got an amazing uh, magnetic box. I'm really pleased that Hay House are producing decks of this quality. And of course, I forgot to mention, they, they also did the Light Seers and the Muse Tarot. Um, so maybe they're getting more you know, into uh, publishing tarot decks as well as oracle decks now. So on the back, it says the Witcher's Wisdom Tarot, two witches, an American Wiccan high priestess. So if you can hear the wind, it is extremely windy today. And uh, I'm on the top floor, so we do hear it quite a bit. And an English hedge witch spent a year journeying into other realms together. The wisdom they received led them to create a radical new interpretation of the tarot for these times. Unlike traditional tarots, which guide the seeker to enlightenment by leaving the earth behind, they were shown a tarot for the earth offering a profound and magical journey into the world, not out of it. So basically, the tarot that we know um and love and i always will um starts with the fall and then goes to the magician you know high priestess etc all the way through into the world in this tarot it starts with the world i believe and ends up with um the fall although the, the major arcana has been renamed as well the courts have also been uh changed they're not a royal or majestic type courts um and they're using the elements which i don't i never have an issue with um decks that use fire earth water etc so a little bit about the author phyllis corot is a spiritual uh pioneer and one of america's first public witches whose teachings and books have made witchcraft accessible to the world and you can find her at uh, Phyllis Corot. Am I saying that right? Corot, I think I am. Dot com. And about the arti artist, uh, Danielle Barlow is a painter, illustrator, and hedge witch whose depictions of humans, animals, plants, and the land beautifully capture the spirit of place. And you can find more about her at DanielleBarlowArt.com. So, as I said, it is in this beautiful box. Just look at this. The little fox there behind the tree. Magic of feather, song and air. Awaken, inspire and make aware. Magic of claw, hearth and fire. Warm, enliven and inspire. Magic of fin, womb and water. Love and dreams conjure. Magic of fur, seed and earth, embody, nourish and give birth. Magic within and around awaken, spirits, answers and guidance taken. Isn't that beautiful? So then we have the book and I love that this is, this is kind of an, a first for me, for a, a mass market deck for the, the cards to come already in this this beautiful uh, bag. So let's let's take them out. It's a chunky deck. And then on the inside, we have this, this is a whole complete unit. You could take it out, but you know, nothing can slip behind or anything like that. And it says, ask your questions, shuffle the cards, open the book and take a look. Spirit hears what's in your heart and answers with love, wisdom, and art. So there's some beautiful poetry and incantations, however you want to view them. 
within the box and it is a fairly sturdy box it's not as rigid as some but it's 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 a decent box and it's decorated beautifully so this is the book and the book is really nice it has a kind of linen feel to it really but it's soft um it's really nice and it's the wishes wisdom tarot guidebook and phyllis carrot and the artwork of course will appear in here although um it doesn't appear that there are images with the cards but i've just seen like a, a I think th there's an odd page where some artwork appears. But this is this is lovely. So this is the inside. So we've got this kind of woodland scene. Let's have a sup of tea. So Witcher's Wisdom Tarot Guidebook. And as we can see here, it is 2020. So our contents, we have the introduction, which is wisdom, tarot meaning and magic, the witch's wisdom tarot, the gift of sight, and then how to work with the witch's wisdom tarot. What I would recommend strongly really is if you are not that familiar with the tarot, because this is kind of, it's, it's doing its own thing, as it's kind of worded on the box, it's uh, they didn't say reimagining. How did they did they word it? Um, a radical new interpretation of the tarot for these times. So radical, uh, radical changes. And then we've got each of the uh, we've got our um, uh, it starts actually with the minors so we've got our air so we have the ace through to ten and then for the courts we have messenger witch craftsman and goddess and i think it's fair to say that we shouldn't view them as page knight queen and king they are messenger witch craftsman and goddess they are their own archetype and that's why, you know, I think if I pull a card and it turns out to be the Witch of uh, Fire, I'm not going to think to myself, well, that's a knight. You know, it is the Witch of Fire. So we have air, fire, water and earth. So no, no stretch <laughs> there, really, because we know that, you know, our air is our swords fire is our wands, water is our cups, and earth is our pentacles or coins. But then we get the major arcana, and again, you know, as I said, we're going in reverse. So we're starting with the world as number one, um, and then initiation, which would be the judgment, the sun, moon, star, and we start to work back. So the maze would be the, the tower card, etc., and all the way down to Pilgrim is the, um, which would have been the Fool, the Pilgrim. The Council of All Beings would be the uh, the Magician, the Priestess instead of High Priestess, Great Mother as Empress, Guardian as the Emperor, Wisdom Keeper as the Hierophant. We have Love, which is still the same for, for our lovers. Journey, which of course would be... Um, the, the chariot, card seven, but it's 15 here. Strength is still in the same position. Um, and then we have shaman, which would be the hermit. The wheel of life, which is great, instead of a wheel of fortune. This is a deck that is around, you know, paganism and nature and the wheel of the year. So we have the wheel of life. The balance of the um, justice card. And then, you know, We've got offering instead of the the hanged man, rebirth instead of death, death and rebirth, two sides of the same coin. Um, and then we have healing, which would be the temperance card and ancestor, which would be the devil, of course. So I can work with them because they're there. And, you know, if if you struggle with that sort of rearrangement of the numbers, think about it this way. The the 
archetypal energy and essence is still the same. If you're shuffling the cards and you lay down three cards and you pick the wheel of life, are you really going to say, oh, but it says 12 on it instead of 10? Um, you will still read it as, as, the, as the wheel of life. But this is explaining the, the journey as they see it, as in going into the earth rather than leaving the earth that they feel the traditional tarot does. Okay, so it talks here about the major arcana order, and then there's a section for keeping in touch. So we've got the introduction. Um, I'm not going to read from that, but other than, you know, um, it talks about their coming together and, and working on the tarot. Then a little bit, um, the witch's wisdom itself. The roots of witch's wisdom are more than 5,000 years old um, and talks about their traditions and beliefs. What I do want to go to, because we, as I said, it starts off with uh, the elements. So we get quite a bit, and we get these little key phrases as well. So A to fire, wake up. Um, then we get the wisdom, the essence, the counsel, and the magic. And I really like that. Wisdom, essence, counsel, and magic. So there's quite a bit of information. But what I want to look at in particular, this is the um, major arcana order. So we finish with card zero, and it gives you the... Um, traditional i think is the best way to put it the traditional number so zero is still zero but here we see how it's starting to work backwards so card 21 council of all beings is our magician or would have been within the traditional tarot so if we just flip to here journey is card 15 in the witch's wisdom but traditionally it would be card seven which is the chariot card I really like this quick reference guide at the back there. And this is what I wanted to show you. So the following table shows the order of the major arcana cards in the Rider Tarot and how they correspond to the major arcana cards of the Witch's Wisdom. So we can see here that we have Rider Tarot, the Fool, Rider Tarot reversed the world, and then world. I'm not quite sure what this Rider Tarot reversed is but obviously it will tell you something in the book about that but for for what i need to know is um there's a quick reference guide here so strength is eight in the rider tarot um but it's card number nine here which is rebirth i know so that's death so if we look at strength, which would be eight, rebirth here is card nine. So, yeah, so card nine is rebirth. And what it should be, it's saying here is card 13, which is death. So rebirth is nine, rider tarot reversed is death. So I'm not quite sure what Rider Tarot and Rider Tarot Reversed is. But anyway, that's a little confusing. I would probably just stick with this and know that, you know, Rebirth traditionally is card 13, which is death. But in this deck, it's nine. Anything else? And then just about how to keep in touch with them. A bit about the author and a bit about the artist at the back. So beautiful illustrations, as you can see here. But let's have a look what we all want to see, which is the cards. Because we've been almost 20 minutes already. So as I said, it comes in this kind of uh, hessian bag. I love the kind of rough string on it. It makes it feel very earthy. It has this uh, navy blue uh, motif, which is beautiful. Okay, so it's a chunky deck, really chunky deck. Let's take the plastic band off. 
it's crying out to be edged. I don't know if anybody else who's got this has edged it or how well it edges, because it'd be lovely in a navy blue because of the backs. So the backs are really beautiful. And as you can see, it's the same design as what's on the bag. And I like that you can store it in the bag because lots of decks that we put into bags then don't fit back into the boxes, but this has been designed uh, to specifically do that. Okay, so beautiful backs, I really like them. I know we should really go through in the order, but what I'm going to do is get to the end of, there we go, get to the end of the minors. And I want to start with the majors. So let's have a bit of a zoom in. Okay. So as you can see, we, we start with the world. Um, and I just wanted to read a little bit uh, from the book because I want to just give more of an explanation as to why um, the, the major arcana has been reversed. So on page 10 of the book, it says the major arcana has reversed direction. When the pilgrim was ready, she moved onto the luminaries the sun, which was 19, now 3, moon, 18, now 4, and star, 17, now 5, and down the rest of the path. As far as we know, it's the first reversal of the major arcana's course in the history of tarot, and it made perfect sense for the witch's tarot. We were on the ancestral path of initiation, a universal shamanic process. Its direction is down and into oneself, into the womb of Mother Earth, not upward into the Father's heaven. Then, transformed, enlightened and embodying the divine, we return to a world we now recognise is also divine. So I really like that and it does explain a lot more, it goes into a lot more uh, depth within the book, but that makes sense, you know connecting going deeper in to the earth and connecting with the earth as a divine rather than going up towards a supreme being in the heavens etc so so that was quite quite wonderful so here we have card one which is the world which would have been the last card in the major arcana and here we have a um a pilgrim or the pilgrim of the deck, leaving this world behind um, and going in search of a, a better world, a better life. Um, and we see this, this township here ablaze with all this smoke, you know, it's almost like the old way of life, the old world is being destroyed or transformed. And here she is carrying a backpack, a heavy backpack with her worldly goods and going off in search of this this new world um what i will do as well and i won't do this for every card but i will just show you um kind of the information you get because when i showed you the minor arcana it was a page but here you get all this about the wisdom and then you get an essence which is your kind of divinatory meaning i suppose or translation of the card, you get a council, and then you get magic. Um, and this really describes the scene, it would seem, because I've just seen here. So about two thirds of the way down the page, it says, a young woman, her gaze fixed on the ground before her, hat pulled low upon her brow, and heavy pack on her shoulders, walks alone. She carries the weight of the old world with her, remnants of what she has been taught to believe about the world, and about herself. She has been bound by constraints and limits, and she longs for a better way to live. She knows there's another world within her, another world awaiting her. She has broken free. She strides into the unknown. Her pilgrimage has begun. 
Isn't that beautifully written? Wow, I'm getting chills um, about this deck. I'm I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a great um, tool to work with. What I haven't shown you yet as well is the card stock, um, which is phenomenal. It's really lovely, thick card stock. It is matte. It is borderless. It's a decent size. When you compare it with a tarot, standard tarot card, um, you can see it's a little bit taller, but it's wider. So I want to say it's Hay House standard, but that would be unfair. But I was thinking of something like The Good Tarot by Colette Baron reed um, It's that size. It's kind of like more like their oracle sizes that they produce. But it's not standard because, you know, Light Seers um, and Muse Tarot doesn't come in this size. But what I like about this size and the fact that they're borderless is you get so much image to really study and look at the details. So I'm... I'm really pleased that actually it is it is this size. So card two is initiation, which oh isn't this beautiful? We've got these foxes here, a badger with something in his mouth. Um, the birds. She's at the water. Oh, it's just beautiful. Now the pendant is what connects because. Through the Major Arcana, the Pilgrim, which we'll find at the end when we get to the um, the real world, the inner world of that person seeking, is connected through each of the cards by this symbol around the neck, which I believe is an apple slice. Let me um, find that in the book. Okay, so on page 12 of the book, it says, And so... On this universal journey, the pilgrim changes genders, ages, and races, while remaining recognisable by the pentacle worn around their neck. An apple slice in which five seeds appear as their journey progresses. And as we journeyed, many of the major arcana took on new appearances, meanings, and teachings appropriate to the witch's wisdom tar tarot. For example, the lovers are no longer a heterosexual couple. Instead, the card is love, experienced and expressed by the pilgrim and her father, one of the deck's guides, Fox. This was one of my favourite journeys to experience and text to write, and its images were beautifully brought to life by Danielle. You can feel the love radiating outward from the pilgrim and the fox, encompassing the other and the world that holds them within the embrace of love. So basically, because it then talks about other cards that changed, the, the most important thing here, the, it, here is that the pilgrim changes genders, ages and races while remaining recognisable by this symbol that is worn around the neck. And I'm wondering if the apple slice with its five pips is those five pentacle points representing earth, fire, water, air and spirit. I'm going to assume it does. And we can see it more clear here. So, you know, the gender and ethnicity has changed, but it's recognisable because, you know, we take on many roles through our journeys and we, we've all got the pilgrim inside of us. So this is a beautiful card. This is the sun card, which is card three here. Beautiful globe behind this beautiful radiant sun the butterflies beautiful flowers there's some scarring happening here as well but look at the expression on the face the moon is gorgeous so now the pendant is being worn by this wolf Here we have the star card. Isn't this just a stunning deck? We have the fish, the birds, there's so much nature. Dragonfly, gorgeous. So we have the maze, which would be the tower card. 
I just want to have a quick look. I promise to not keep reading through the book, but <laughs> it's just, uh, I'm just loving the differences. So for the maze, on the pilgrim's back remains the pack. So that's the pack that we, we saw in the world card, but it's smaller now. How far he's come by stepping off the path he knows, by getting lost and tumbling downward, confused, disoriented and exhilarated. There have been blessings on the way, gold and silver and stars in the darkness, but twists and turns lie ahead. The great unmaking has just begun. The old ways are still to be undone. Magic waits within the maze. The pilgrim stands poised on its edge. The moment of choosing has arrived and his guide slips out of sight. Who calls from deep within? Who dwells in the centre of the maze? Demon or divinity? Minotaur, monster or source of love and life? The old self or the new? A sense of panic arises. For when you don't know where you are going, which way do you go? Without bearings, you could be lost forever. A lightning bolt strikes, cleaving the darkness for a flashing instance, dangerous but revealing. The mystery has an ancient pattern. You must die to be reborn, releasing the past for the future to take form. The pilgrim enters the maze, trusting the unknown and knowing that there is no turning outward until the self within is found. Oh, this is like reading poetry. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Okay. Then we have our ancestor. Wow. And look at this. These drops of blood. We've holding these um, thorns on the stems. Of course, the ancestor would be the devil card. We have healing. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all these kind of, almost like spirits. It's like laying down in the grass, looking upwards and seeing these ancestral spirits just uh, providing healing. We have rebirth, which is the death card in the traditional tarot. I love the earrings, the moon and the sun. That night and day, life and death. Death and rebirth. So beautiful. We have offering. I love this. Isn't this beautiful? The balance card. Look at that bear. The fox. Oh, it's just stunning. We have the wheel of life. It's everything depicted there, isn't there? Wow. There's so much to take in. I suppose you could link these as well to um, the wheel, the seasons, or the sabbats, I should say, sow and yule, etc. So this is our, our hermit card, which would be card nine. And it's the shaman. But again, you get that sense, you know, with going within, blindfolded, but beating that drum and just connecting. If anybody's ever been to any drumming class, particularly shamanic drumming, the I've sat in a chair and had drummers walk around me beating their drum and the resonance is so healing. 
it really, you feel, you feel the beat within. It's a wonderful experience. Here we have strength. It's just stunning. Gorgeous card. Journey. Oh, look. Let's just have a quick look at Journey. So all pilgrimages are journeys into the unknown. The path disappears. There is neither map nor sign. Those who passed this way before left no mark on land or time. The pilgrim is discovering where they are and so they are discovering who they are. The vastness of the land around them puts things into perspective. They have learned they can't depend on someone else's map if they are to have the great adventure of finding their own way and so finding themselves. The landscape within will determine which way they choose. And as they choose, their inner domain of becoming whole and holy will change. They will be free. They are free. The future is theirs to create. Incredible. Oh. <laughs> And this is the um, one I read out earlier about love. And I love that love is not the lovers. Um, the lovers is my life path card. You've heard about me talk about it many, many times and how I struggle uh, with that. But the lovers actually, I always think of the two of cups as being the true lovers of the tarot. The lover's card and the archetype of lovers is, you know, developing a relationship with yourself and all forms of relationships. And here we see a girl with a fox, but the book describes it as a girl with her father. Um, and that is just so special. Just look at that connection, that bond. Beautiful. Do you see the apple slice? Such beautiful artwork. Here we have the Wisdom Keeper, which would be the Hierophant, traditional card five or key five. But yeah, that's the sort of Hierophant I want to sit in front of and converse with and learn from. Beautiful image. Our Guardian, which is our Emperor. And just look at this, I hope Let's have a look at the, I mean, look how they go together. Ah, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So we've got like the horned guard, haven't we? Um, and it's a stunning card. And we have our badger and our fox, little hair, butterflies. It's such a beautiful, but you know, as, as somebody who feels pagan, somebody who reveres nature and has a connection to the earth, this is the best emperor card. Our guardian of the earth, our custodian. And then we have great mother, which is beautiful. Look at these, the red of these, cop, uh, these poppies, beautiful bear, stunning. Priestess. A love as well. The red and the white roses. Little frog there. <laughs> Just gorgeous. Love the moon. The council of all beings. Gorgeous. And then we are at the end of our journey, the pilgrim who has journeyed from the world, found a new world, a new world within. And here we have this beautiful depiction. So last time I will read from the book, but I want to read about Our pilgrim 
Light of heart with dancing feet and clear eyes, the pilgrim sets forth, knowing that every path is open before her. Beside her travels Fox, with keen senses and keener instincts, her companion and guide to the magic at play within the seeming randomness of daily events encounters. Patterns will emerge to reveal the pilgrim's purpose and the meaning of her life, but it's trust rather than foresight that guides her, trust that she will be taken care of as she travels. Like a child remembering the words to the beginning of a fairy tale, she wonders where it will all lead, but everything that surrounds her is alive, connected, bountiful and benevolent. All she has to do is recognise that. Free, see there's no backpack now, although there's some straps there, but it says free from the weight or the constraints of the past, free from fear or expectations of the future. The pilgrim is fully present in the moment, in the world, in herself. Her feather in her cap reflects the enlightenment she has earned and that she seeks as her journey continues. A pentacle of apple seeds hangs above her heart, the one that we've seen all the way through, symbolising the elements of spirit that she, like Mother Earth, embodies. Within each seed resides magic, including the great power of rebirth. That power resides within the pilgrim too, the power to rise again after every ending loss or sorrow. I could keep reading on, but... I won't, there's so much more, but what a combination of fantastic writing and beautiful artwork. So we have our Ace of Air, and I promise to pick up speed now. We have our Ace of Air, and we have this beautiful harp with these bones, but the strings are the spider's uh, web. Gorgeous. There are no humans in the miners. There are animals and there are nature scenes, but there are no humans until we get to what would be traditionally the court cards. at that I love this it's almost like a a witch's ladder but with feathers tied in cross between that and a dream catcher a little hag stone here at the bottom tied to a tree Okay, so our courts are messenger of air, the witch of air, craftsman of air, and the goddess of air. So we have one of the goddesses. I wonder if that's a Nancy. Let's have a look. Um, goddess of Air. It just says, ancient and ever present, the goddess of air spins a fabric of infinite connection. She untangles the past, repairs the present and weaves the future. She is grandmother spider braid in destiny with the passage of time. Fingers and feet on the web of life. She feels every moment, senses the smallest vibration, knows what lies beneath the surface. In one hand, she holds a spindle, in another, a knife. In another, a sistrum. To set the tempo for the billion heartbeats allotted to all living beings before she cuts the threads and weaves the magic of life again. Wow. 
this book is going to get so much use. <laughs> and here we have our fire. And wow, we get this forging stone here, this cauldron. We've got um, a kind of lemniscate that's also like kind of like a Aurora Boris. Two of fire. It's almost like a, a DNA strand. These two snakes. Oh, that's gorgeous. The temptation is so great to pick up the book and read <laughs> about every card, but that's something I will do in my own time. But this is just an incredible deck. Oh, again. Look at the connection. This is the two of cups, the two of water. And just look at that. Three little ducks. Beautiful little rainbow in the corner. And of course these are all animals associated with water and look the melting little polar caps a little rose there water can be found even in the driest and barren of places that's gorgeous these little turtles look this little dude and then we have our final suit which is the earth Oh, look. Oh. There are standing stones. It's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, how stunning. This pack of wolves just making its way through the snow, but look at the sky, the northern lights. Wow.
Oh. I was looking at this, but there's actually a face here, look. It's very clever. These two kind of little buds making the eyes. It's like the green man, isn't it, in nature? The little leaves making teeth. At least that's what I'm assuming. <laughs> Tongue. Nostrils. I am right, right? <laughs> Oh, I love that image. Look at that for the goddess of Earth. I know I said I won't read again, but let's just have a look at our goddess of Earth. When summer comes, lie down with your belly to Mother Earth's belly. Smell the soil, the scent of life being nourished, a woman, a cow, an ancient figure of strange and welcoming wonder appears. Barley to her east, blue lotus to her west. She stands before you, her milk filling the bowl in her lap and overflowing, spilling into a river running through the green valleys around her. She wears a crown of blessings, a bee skep between her horns. Honey drips between her gentle eyes. She is milk and honey. She is the land. She nurtures us from her body. How she loves us. Let her mark your forehead and your mind will open up to the stars. This book is poetry. <laughs> ah, this is wonderful. Okay, sorry if this walkthrough has been longer than my usual walkthroughs, but there is so much to say about this deck. It is gorgeous. I haven't watched complete walkthroughs, even Becca's, sorry Becca, if you watch this, I watched it to a point and then I knew I wanted to order it. Um, but, oh, it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. So, there we have it. This is the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. The book is written in such a beautiful and easy to read way. The packaging is great. Hay House has done a phenomenal job. I love everything about it. Even giving you a little bag to keep the cards in. This wasn't too expensive. I think it retails for around £30, but I got it for 20 It was £10 off on Amazon, so I went for it, um, and I'm so glad I did. It's It moves me, it speaks to me, it's everything I want in a tarot deck. I will get my head around the reordering, I get why they've done it, but you know what? As I said, once I'm doing a spread and I've laid my cards out, I will read the sun as the sun. You know, it doesn't matter in a spread where the orders are. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. Until next time, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be.